good morning and happy new year to each and every one of you. I am delighted to welcome you to the very first worship service here at Brambleton Presbyterian Church in this brand new year, 2021. And I, for one, cannot think of a better way to launch into a brand new endeavor than by gathering around a meal together. And so that's what we're going to do today here in this virtual worship service. We are going to commune virtually together. We are going to share the Lord's Supper, also known as communion or the Holy Eucharist. And friends, here's what I can promise you. Though we must still be physically distanced from one another, separated by these screens, I assure you, God is not beholden to the boundaries of time and place. God is able and surely will enter into all that physically separates us this morning, these screens, and bring us together in mysterious ways around this meal. After all, that is truly at the heart of what was Jesus's singular message. In Jesus Christ, God meets us right where we are. And God mysteriously brings us together through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. And so surely God is in our midst as we share communion, even virtually here this morning. I hope that you had an opportunity to gather your elements today, your crackers and bread, whatever you choose, your juice. If not, that's okay. I'm gonna give you a little bit of an opportunity to gather that after I read the scriptures. But for now, friends, let's launch into this brand new year. Let's continue on in this worship service with a word of prayer. Please join me as I pray. Holy God, thank you so much for your love for us. Thank you for this brand new year, 2021. Lord, in this year, will you touch us and move us on in powerful ways? Holy God, please enter our worship now and touch our hearts and our minds and our mouths, our mouths. Inspire us with courage and hope as we launch forward into a new beginning. Please join us now in this worship. We pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. Alrighty, friends, I'm going to turn you over to our very able worship band. stronger the king of glory the king above all kings who shakes the whole earth with holy thunder and leaves us breathless in awe and wonder the king of glory the king above all Glory, the King of glory, who rules the 
expectations with truth and justice shines like the sun in all of its brilliance the king of glory the king above all kings yeah this is amazing grace this is a feeling love that you would take my place that you would bear my cross oh you laid down your life that i would be set free oh jesus i sing for all that you've done says God brings order out of chaos. I think we should turn that into a bold prayer. Let's together ask God to bring order out of the chaos that 2020 caused in all of our lives, not only our lives, but around the globe. I'm so grateful for our worship leaders. They do such a good job bringing us in to God's presence. And I want to turn now to the scriptures, also a powerful way to come into God's presence. I'm going to focus on the story that describes how this meal, the Lord's Supper, came to be and why it's so important to Christians around the globe. Listen now for God's word. If you have your Bibles, you can turn to Luke 22. If not, that's okay. The words will be on the screen right beside me as I'm reading. This is God's word. For God's people. The institution of the Lord's Supper. When the hour came, he, meaning Jesus, took his place at the table and the apostles were with him. Jesus said to them, I have eagerly desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I will not eat again until it is fulfilled in the kingdom of God. And then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he said, Take this and divide it among yourselves. For I tell you that from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God comes. Then he took a loaf of bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And he did the same with the cup after saying, This cup that is poured out for you is the new covenant in my blood. The word of God for the people of God. 
We're gonna share this meal together here now and I want to just pause and give you an opportunity to gather together the bread that, or the crackers that you were gonna use and also the juice. So we're gonna just take a few minutes if you hadn't if you hadn't already got that together now would be the time to do that and then i will come back and lead us through the sharing of this meal that Jesus sat down to share this meal, the meal about which I just read to you, on that evening, the feeling in the room in which they were gathered was celebratory and festive. For you see, just a week earlier, Jesus, along with the apostles referenced in the story, the 12 disciples and about 70 others, entered into ancient Jerusalem. And as they approached the gates, a parade, a chorus of praise erupted, surrounding Jesus with joy flowing from the hearts of those around him. And that's because they had come to believe what we now know to be true. They finally had discovered that Jesus Christ is the Savior for all of humanity. And so they were truly excited, especially the disciples for they were closest to Jesus. Whenever I read about this story, I often think that it was it's like the feeling that we have on New Year's Eve. I mean, think about just a few days ago, we were feeling a bit more celebratory and festive than we felt in a while. We were saying goodbye to 2020 and looking forward in hope with celebration in our heart to new things on the horizons. That was sort of what it was like I believe for the disciples, they were close to Jesus. They knew he was the Messiah and they were truly looking forward to the kingdom that he would begin to build. For Jesus, I suspect there were a whole host of other feelings swirling around inside of his soul. And that's because our Lord was always grounded in our earthly reality. He was deeply aware that life rarely turns out the way that we want it to turn out, rarely. And for his friends, he knew that in just a few short hours, there was a crushing blow awaiting them, one they were not anticipating and one they would surely regret and not want. And so as that night, as Jesus sat at the table with his closest friends, I believe that as he looked into their faces, he realized that just as we need physical food to sustain our earthly bodies, they and all believers who would come after them would need spiritual food fueled by God on high to empower them for their, the, the life that unfolds, especially when the crushing blows come our ways. For them, it was the crucifixion. For us, we are hoping to recover from all of the disappointment, the crushing nature of 2020. And so that night, Jesus did something he had never done before in the times that they had shared the Passover meal. At a time that was known to him, revealed by God's Spirit, as you heard in the story that I just read to you, Jesus took the bread that was on their table and then he broke it in front of them. And after breaking it, he lifted it to God and he gave thanks to God for it. And then he offered it to their, his friends saying, this is my body broken for you. In a similar way, soon after the bread, he poured the cup out, wine in their day, juice in ours, before them. And just as he had done with the bread, he lifted the cup to God and gave thanks for it. And then he said, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of your sins and the sins of all of humanity. 
And ever since that time, when believers gather around the table, Christ meets us and nourishes us through the spiritual food provided in the bread and the juice. And friends, I assure you that each and every one of you, that I, that we are Jesus's friends. And what he was offering the 12 disciples that night is still what we need to nourish us, to spiritually fuel us for our lives. For as much as I wish I could tell you it was going to be different, we said goodbye to 2020, but surely in this new year, 2021, there will also be disappointments and shifting and sacrifices that we must make. And as it has always been the case, ever since Jesus made this offer, in this brand new year, what God offers is what we need to sustain us. And why do I say that? Because in this offer, through our faith, God provides the same power that he offered Jesus in his time of despair and defeat. He raised Jesus Christ up from the crushing defeat, despair of the crucifixion, and through our faith in Jesus, he raises us up as well. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, he heals us when we are battered and bruised by our own sin. Through our faith in Jesus Christ, he empowers us to go on when it seems to us that we have come to the end of ourselves. Through our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, he sustains us and nourishes us and fuels us for whatever life brings, whatever 2021 will bring our way. Whenever we share this meal, I always remind us as members of Brambleton Presbyterian Church and anyone who is joining us here this morning, that the faith I'm lifting up is not a matter of perfection. So it is not that you have to be a perfect Christian or, a, or have your faith per perfectly figured out when you come to this meal. Jesus made it so clear in his earthly ministry that God understands we have questions, God anticipates and understands we have doubts, and God sees all of the times when the circumstances in our lives make it difficult to continue on in our faith. So this table is not about our perfected faith. Jesus assured us that God sees and understands that a faith journey has ups and downs. We don't have to have it all figured out to come to this table, to find a seat at this table. We don't have to earn our way here. If we tried, we couldn't. The invitation to be here is at God's initiative. God graciously offers us a path forward in Jesus Christ and our faith in him. And so we are glad that you were here. Whatever amount of faith you have today, God will touch it and nourish you and sustain you through it. I'd like to invite you now to stand wherever you are. For at this point in our time at the communion table, we are going to recite the Apostles' Creed. It succinctly contains the tenets, what it is that we believe when we say that we have faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. If you don't have it memorized, that's okay. It's going to be right here on the screen and you can say it with us. Let's join together and remember, though a screen separates us, God is bringing us together in this moment. Let's recite this together. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now, friends, if you did stand, please sit down, 
and we will continue on in a prayer of great thanksgiving. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for your love that brought us all to be. We thank you for your grace that sustains us. We thank you for your discipline that corrects us, your patience that carries us, and your love that redeems us. We are also so thankful for our church. Our church has never been about a building. We don't own one. Our church is about real people doing the best we can, gathered in faith around Jesus. Though we are still physically distanced from one another, your spirit, we believe, mysteriously is uniting us in this moment, in faith and in hope. And Lord, as we look forward to this brand new year, we lift a prayer for all those who lost a loved one to the coronavirus last year. May they, these saints, rest in peace. Grant unto them eternal rest. And please, Lord, comfort their families. We pray as well for those who, ringing in this brand new year, are doing that without their beloved by their side. Give them comfort as they grieve. Help them to be patient and kind to themselves as the journey of grief is never short and it is never easy. We thank you for the advancements, advancement of the vaccines. And oh Lord, we pray for leaders all over the globe as their work, as they work to distribute access. May it be distributed in just and equitable ways, especially may it, these vaccines flow to the most vulnerable. We pray for healing for those in our midst, for Rick, that his hand surgery will be a success, for Jeannie, that you will relieve the pain in her knee, for Ahmed's mother, who is in her last days, Lord, for Denise and Stuart and Sarah, for Evan and Ellie, and for Rob, who is caring for his dad, Evan, for Brooke, Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for students and educators and parents as now together they gear up to continue navigating all these different forms of learning, distant and hybrid. Lord, hear their prayers. We pray, we boldly pray for the healing of the racism in our nation, for our leaders, for our policymakers, for all people who daily make decisions that have great significance for our lives. Fill them, God, with wisdom and compassion and mercy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the private concerns of every person virtually worshiping with us right now. Lord, surely you know each and every detail, every hair on each of their heads. Hear their prayers. Gracious God, thank you for inviting us to this meal. As we partake, please fill us with the spiritual food that will fuel our faith with courage to look forward to 2021 in faith and in hope. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. I want to invite you now for the next 20 to 30 seconds to partake of the bread and the juice, remembering the sustaining nature of it as it applies to your faith. And if you are watching worship with someone this morning, I invite you to pass the bread to each person who is joining you, and then to pass the juice, partaking in God's grace, offered to us visibly apparent in the bread and the juice. So we'll take some time now to share the elements with one another. The gifts of God for the people of God. Now, friends, let's join our hearts as we close this powerful meal 
with the prayer of thanks and of sending out. Please join me in prayer. Loving and merciful God, you have spared nothing, going with us even into the depths and pain of our most agonizing human experience, death. In Jesus Christ and through our faith in him, you raise us up into your hope and healing for the world. Thank you. Thank you that you count us worthy to share in the suffering of Jesus for the redemption of all people. And so we humbly pray that you will raise us up in Jesus Christ to feed the hungry, to bind up the brokenhearted, to comfort and care for all in need. Shine through us your beacon of hope in your hurting world. Amen. joined us today for worship. I invite you to check out our social media sites and to also check out our website. We have a lot coming up in 2021 and we're going to launch into a brand new sermon series next week, which I'm very excited about, titled 2021. We want to, I want to encourage you to continue giving to the church and thank you so much for your generosity in 2020. Your gifts have sacrificial, are sacrificial in nature, and they have empowered us to continue to be here for the community in a time of great need. 
So now friends, as you launch into this first week in 2021, may the love of God the Father Almighty, the fellowship of Jesus Christ the Son, and the abiding, sustaining, nourishing power of the Holy Spirit fill you and buoy your faith with courage and love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, go in peace and go in hope. God bless you.